Thank you for joining me here on the last segment of today's show. Just a quick injury update to remind you guys of anything to keep an eye on heading into, you know, the weekend now. If you have any fantasy leagues going on or something, the potential risk sort of of some of these players maybe not being in your lineup just because we are dealing with some injuries to some of the guys that are definitely rostered on some of your guys' team in fantasy. Starting off with some of the biggest news, like you, the title shows you, the 49ers and how they're dealing with their injuries, right? Um, tight end George Kittle, he appeared on their injury report yesterday due to some hamstring tightness. Um, he didn't practice yesterday on top of that, so that is something to monitor. Um, you know, you're already without Debo Samuel, you're already without Christian McCaffrey. I haven't seen anything else about the the limitations on George Kittle as of right now. I will continue to check, but, you know, George Kittle is obviously one of their best players. He does so much for them in the run game, the passing game on top of it. So keeping an eye on him and how that hamstring sort of works itself out, you know, the hamstring, calves, things like that are very nagging and very annoying honestly it seems like to kind of get rid of so that will be something to watch as the weekend goes on and see how he hopefully gets better over the next couple of days then also still with the 49ers Traverius Ward as well who also didn't practice yesterday because of a hamstring and knee issues is sort of 50-50 I would say to playing or not playing this upcoming weekend and you know it is going to be a uh, a bigger game, right? Going up against the Rams. It's basically like coming down to who is the healthier team, just honestly, at this point, right? Because you look at all the injuries the Rams are dealing with and the 49ers, you know, still very good, very talented, but it comes to a point still where, like, this is kind of crazy now that the George, Debo, and all these guys are getting injured, right? So having an advantage anywhere that you can is going to be a decider in that one. Charverius Ward, obviously their top corner, trying to go out there and put on a defensive performance, a dominant defensive performance on the Rams that don't have Cooper Cup or don't have Puka Nakua, right? So having such an advantage there is going to be huge, but we'll see how those guys go. I'm sure it's going to be a Sunday decision, if I were to guess. But elsewhere, on a positive note for the 49ers, their safety one of their starting safeties definitely um, is expected to make his debut this season. Talanoa Hufanga, who tore his ACL last year and missed the entire year, obviously, has been going through a gauntlet of trying to recover over the last year, basically. And he is finally ready to go. They feel good about him. He's going to make his season debut in the game against the Rams. So that's a great sign for their defense. Now pretty much only missing... Drake Greenlaw as the only last addition to this team before they're complete again. So that's going to be huge. Looking forward to that. He's one of the uh, the underrated safeties, I think. I was very impressed with some of the games and how big of an impact he made for the 49ers. So good to see him back. But elsewhere now, getting off of the 49ers now, finally, we look at T. Higgins. He's been dealing with a nagging hamstring injury. There it is again, the hamstring um, he's been injured for a good portion now of the season or the first two weeks, obviously, but he hasn't practiced since September 5th. So he is kind of trending in a direction now where it's looking more and more optimistic that he could make his debut on Monday, which also makes it a lot better having that extra day in there. The Bengals will take on the Washington Commanders on Monday. I feel like the, the Bengals should handle the commanders relatively without trouble but if you feel like T Higgins and he wants to play in this game Zach Taylor said that he is trending in the right direction I wouldn't have a massive problem if he started but I feel like they could hold him off one more week and still um, win this game but who knows he did return to practice like I said yesterday in a limited capacity so still not practicing fully so that's another reason why you still try to keep him without hurting himself, essentially kind of protect him from himself and doing too much. But definitely a positive sign, right? Having him back at practice now, 
to help out this offense any way that he can just by being out there along with Jamar Chase, giving another option to Joe Burrow is going to be huge. And some quick hitters here for you guys in this segment. The Eagles starting safety C.J. Gardner-Johnson missed practice as well yesterday with a foot injury. He was not on the injury report on Wednesday and then it just popped up yesterday. So being on a couple days notice now of playing the game on Sunday. We'll see how that foot goes. I don't know the extent of what it's looking like right now. But um, it will be something very interesting to keep track of just because... Starting safety, you know, you're going up against the New Orleans Saints. High-powered offense, red hot at the moment. You need everybody on that defense to be locked in, knowing everything that there is to know uh, of the game plan and executing it. Without having CJ back there, they're already sort of thin at that position. I I actually don't know who would start at safety um, out with Reed Blankenship, so that's pretty concerning. I don't Again, I don't know the extent of it. I just know that he wasn't on the injury report on Wednesday, and then he popped up yesterday. It is something to just keep an eye on. He will be listed as questionable, I am assuming, heading into that game. But it is a good matchup, I think, just from the sense that I'm sure CJ would want to play in it. It's one of his former teams, so there is more incentive there, but it is something the Eagles have to keep a close eye on, not to overdo it with him. Then elsewhere in Cleveland, funny enough, Another foot injury, Miles Garrett continues to be out of practice with that injury, that foot injury that popped up last Thursday. He didn't practice again this Thursday now, and uh, he missed last Thursday's practice, but he was limited last Friday, and I don't know the status of his practice today. I haven't seen any news pop up as of yet, but with this injury, it doesn't seem that bad because... Miles said last week that he's gonna ju- that he's just gonna play through it. So, um, it does kind of concern me just because if he's gonna play through it, um, it seems like it isn't that bad. But also, I don't want you to be playing through anything, right? I want you to be healthy um, at this point of the season. So that one's a little bit weird to kind of keep track of, just because is he hurt? Is he not hurt? Is he? Not going to practice every Thursday now going forward with this nagging foot injury. That'll be something to watch. But he played relatively well last week. So I'm kind of leaning towards the fact that maybe it's not that bad. But still something that popped up on the injury report. Then also some more positive news. Justin Jefferson for the Minnesota Vikings was listed as a limited participant for the second straight day yesterday with that quad injury. But he told... A reporter for ESPN that he feels great actually and that he will play against the Houston Texans this upcoming Sunday um, for sure those were his words so he's feeling great he says he's feeling well so you look back to last year and how you know Justin Jefferson was dealing with I forget what it was what injury he had um, to start the year last year you know once he came back from that then he was dealing with something else right and that was kind of frustrating so I'm sure the Vikings are just being overly cautious with him on a new plan to keep him as healthy as possible. So to me, that one's pretty positive. You know, it is still a limited participation, but I feel like Justin's going to be out there. If he says he's feeling good, then I think we should just take his word for it. Um, They're going to need him certainly against the Houston Texans and that high-powered offense, which leads me into my next segment now, or my next person I wanted to talk about next player Joe Mixon on the other side of this game for the Houston Texans missed his second straight day of practice yesterday with that ankle injury he suffered last week against the Chicago Bears on Sunday night football so the chances aren't looking great for Joe Mixon to make it to Sunday if he missed Wednesday and he missed Thursday on top of that Um, sure, it's not going to be enough days, you know, to kind of have him in there and be 100% that he's going to feel great, look the same out there. So to me, that's going to be closer to the, you know, inactive status at this point. Um, And it's a big one because even if it might seem like they don't necessarily need Joe Mixon, right, because they still have Stefan and Nico and, uh, and Tank Dell, I just felt like, 
Mixon has been so good for the Texans, bringing that extra sense of balance and just completing this offense as a whole that um, he's played two great games and now for him to be out, we're definitely going to notice a difference in my opinion, especially against the Vikings who offensively themselves draw up a very good game plan it seems each and every week behind Kevin O'Connell. So um, not having him is going to be a big loss again. The chances aren't looking great for him. And what's interesting about this one is that um, he was tackled by TJ Edwards in what looked like a hip drop tackle. And I brought it up last Sunday when it kind of happened. And for the fact that the NFL, for how much they talked about it and how big a deal it was, um, how they didn't call it. Because it seemed pretty clear just based on the fact that TJ kind of dragged his body weight behind him and just tackled him that way. Um, crushing the ankle behind Joe Mixon as well in an awkward fashion. Um, the NFL didn't call it. The officials didn't call it. And um, it's unfortunate now that we're probably not going to see Joe Mixon and not have the penalty be called is uh, is not great. It's not a good look for the NFL. But uh, that's pretty much the news on Joe Mixon. I don't expect them out there. And like I said, you know, Justin Jefferson – uh, Joe Mixon, George Kittle, some guys that maybe you guys have on fantasy or something like that or fans of for your respected teams, they might not be out there or it will be a last minute decision based on these injury updates. But that will be the last guy we talk about on this segment and for the show because that's the end of it. You know, thank you guys for tuning in for this episode of the GSMC Chip Shot Football Podcast. Remember to like, follow, and subscribe to the show as well on top of following the network on all forms of social media. If you want to see more of this show and more variety in terms of the content that we put out, check out both YouTube channels and see YouTube shorts, individual segment videos on all the topics we cover on the show. And remember to tune in every weekday at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time. With me, your host, Manny Maradiege, covering all the storylines and headlines around the NFL. Have you guys a great weekend. Go watch some football and join me back here on Monday to talk about everything over the weekend back on Monday. I'll see you guys then. Let's go. I wake up to a little bit of drool on my pillow, feel like it's gonna be a bad day Yeah, I'm tired of shit, and the coffee ain't hit yet, damn ain't that great I don't wanna go to